What's up? What's up? What's up, you guys? And welcome to the very first Tasty Titty Tuesday. It's your girl T Gray. We're here, WEMS Radio. It's good to see you all. We're gonna have a little sex talk tonight. I have two dope guests and guest co-hosts in the building with me tonight. One of my faves out of Baltimore, making major waves, comedian King Tink. I also have on with me tonight, comedian Mike. B. These brothers are doing big things, you guys, in the DMV. Can't wait to get this chit chat on. Can't wait to talk about some titty issues today because that's what's going on today. Yo, let's bring these guests on in here and get this thing started. You. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Hi, guys. How you doing? Yo, I'm so happy to see you Thank all. You. Like, first though, Tink, I ain't seen you since the world was open, man. Like, I, I ain't know, seen man. The world was open. I, I appreciate you having me for uh, End of America Eve. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes, and Mike B, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, I'm gonna give everybody an opportunity at the end to kind of do their social media and do what they got going on, but we're gonna jump right into this. Yo, you all came in on a good day. It's Tasty Titty Tuesday. Welcome. Okay, I like titties. You like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't we all yeah, yeah. don't we all like titties? So I'm shout a, out to I'm all a fan. I'm a fan. You're a fan. Good job, good job. So shout out to all the ladies. Whose titties don't smell like sour milk? Okay, shout out to y'all. Shout out to all the ladies whose titties ain't salty. We're gonna keep this going. What's your shout out, Tink? Shout out to all the ladies whose titties at what? Shout, shout out to all the ladies with, 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 with a titty, with a nipple, with other nipples around it, and look like a Nestle Crunch Bar. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> what you got on the titties, Mike? What you got? Uh, shout, out to, shout out to the titties that are even. That that one titty higher than the other. Uh, you know, I don't like uneven, balanced titties. I like my titties. Oh, to be, I like my, <laughs> my titties to be level like this. I like even, I like level titties. I don't like my, <laughs> I don't like my titties like a. Oh, oh. Titty. Hi. I like, I don't like titties. I'm not a big, big <laughs> titties gotta get rotated like a like a tire. <laughs> How are you going to put them kind of stipulations now on a woman's titties? And then the first off, ain't no two titties even. Now, unless you go to the doctor, okay, to get that shit straightened out. Ain't no two titties even. I feel like that is undue pressure you putting on women out here, might be. I'm saying, like I mean, to the, to the naked eye, there's some titties that are, like, uneven. Like, to the naked eye. To the naked eye is like, you know what, this titty is a little higher than the other, you know, but you can see it visually, like, through the bra. You don't want them to be... Nah, just, just level as long as you're wearing your clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when the titties you don't want them to look, you don't want them to look like <laughs> you don't want them to look like the justice scales. Yeah, no, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> but just look, just just so we're clear, but you'd still hit though. Oh yeah, I'm smashing. Yeah, I mean, I'm never, I'm never, I'm not gonna be like, man, that titty is uneven. I'm out. You know, I'm not gonna never pack up my bag and go. <laughs> <laughs> You, know, you just got to make do what you got. I'm just saying, if I had a choice, if I had to build a titty, like build a bear, if I had to build a titty, I need my titties to be even. That's all. So let me tell you all what this brings me to. So there are a lot of things that we find attractive that we want in the bedroom. But then there's also a list of things that could be like ultimate turnoffs. And so I was having a conversation and somebody was like, no, nah, if the titty's not right, I'm out. So King Tang, what would be your ultimate turnoff? And not only what would it be, but has it changed since the pandemic? Well, uh, it ain't changed since the pandemic because, like, me and my girl still together. Love you, baby. Uh, but fuck it, uh, yes, but, yes, uh, your pretty uh, girlfriend. Yeah, an ultimate turnoff. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like chipped up toenails. I don't like that. My dick still looks really hard, but I, I just don't like it, though. Hey, Sean. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. And that normally happens when chicks try to paint the toes themselves. Like, no, go get it professionally done. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and get that together. Because I don't like you, man. It looks like you're incomplete. Your toes are incomplete. <laughs> oh, like shit. Like, still downloading. I don't oh. like that shit. I so, said, hold on. You just, you, you just talk to my soul because it's time for me to get a pedicure, bro. 
So I just need, yeah, I need like, get, get, yo, my socks on in this street. <laughs> she's <laughs> looking like, like oh. she's looking like Baltimore row homes. You know, they ain't, they, they all, like, <laughs> there's always one in the middle. It's fucked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's okay. why I don't, I don't like that. Okay. And let me, let me tell you the reason why I asked whether or not it's changed since the pandemic is because a lot of people's standards changed during that time, um, either because right. we were oversexed or we were undersexed. So it might have been some things that people are like, nah, I would never. But once that pandemic hit, like bring every midget, bring every fat bitch. Like I just, 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 just whatever's there, just, just go ahead. You know what I mean? Like people have kind of thrown caution to the wind with what they want and what they don't want. So What's about you, Mike? What 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 are your ultimate turn off? Well, first of all, uh, I'm married. I don't I don't have any of those issues. Um, I just <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got like rewind time to remember when because my wife is looking at me. So I don't. All my turn offs are, are turned on now thanks to my wife. Hey, babe. <laughs> and said, let me be as politically correct <laughs> as I possibly can when I say what I say and how I say it. Yeah, I just I'm, I'm good. I'm good now. I can't afford that. I can't afford that child support and and alimony. So yeah, I I, I like it all. Eight to eighty blind cripple crazy. Whatever she want to do, it's on. It's on. Hey, chip those toenails and all. You know what? Once up, whatever. I'm here. Let's go. Whatever. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I do. I would say. Um, but I will. I don't like. I do uh, judge my, people. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. My fault. I, I was going to say. I I, in my, I I do remember in my day that I didn't like underwear, that the woman had underwear that had like the little, the, like the, the strings or whatever, that, that, like it's been the dry too long. Like, like the lacy ones and it start to bead up? That's yeah, yeah. Like, if I, I don't like, like that. that. Yeah, okay. I don't like that. Okay. You know, that's a bad presentation. That's a bad presentation. I don't like that. Listen, presentation <laughs> is still important, yo. So, so many people have gotten away from presenting themselves when they go into the bedroom. And I'm not going to act like I'm not guilty of it to you guys, but like what happened to the good old Victoria's Secret days when you come in stunting or a nigga at least put on something silky like the, what, what, what y'all wearing to the bedroom? Y'all just y'all just busting in socks and a towel or what, what, what y'all doing? What you doing, Tink? <laughs> yeah, I don't I, I don't I don't know what, what niggas are supposed to, what's sexy to women for like, is it silk robes? I don't know. Like, I just no, no, sometimes just, we just we need we need visuals too, fellas. Just the just public service announcement for twenty twenty one. Hey, I'm a boxer brief nigga. That's that's it. That's that's it. it. Like, that's, <laughs> that's it. Like, I, I don't I, I don't know what else you y'all y'all want. Like you want silk robe? You want me to look like Ralph Tresman in the sensitivity video? I don't know what yes. you want. Hell yeah, that's what we want. We want nineties R and B in that bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me all of that. Nah. Go ahead and make your mustache thin, everything. Feel like <laughs> do the whole look, goddamn. So, Mike, being as though that you're married, I can. I'm going to just assume that over time, sex kind of changes. You know what I mean? We we get kind of comfortable. And then sometimes with married couples, you know, we, we um, are trying to find ways to spice things up, keep things fresh, what have you. Um, do you feel like you should still have a certain presentation when you go into the bedroom with your wife? Or are you like, nah, that's just my wife? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, what turns my, I, know, I know exactly what turns my wife on. If, if I'm in boxer briefs and I made the bed that day. She comes home for a maid bed and boxer briefs. We getting it in. So I don't <laughs> if I put all thirty two pillows on that bed back precisely the way she likes it, with the full pillow and the sheets and everything tucked in. Game over. Now, who's knocking all the pillows off the bed? Is she coming in snatching that shit off? Oh yeah, I, I mean, oh, I love I'm, it. I'm not allowed. Oh, to. I love it. Yeah, I'm not allowed to. I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, I even know what half of them pillows supposed to do. I'm not supposed to sleep on them, so I don't. You know, I just don't want to bed. <laughs> That's funny. So one thing that I've noticed, um, I guess I, I guess I'll just say about myself, like my perception of what I find sexy has kind of changed over time. 
Mm-hmm. But I feel like that one piece, the, the having presentation, I feel like that that's something that people should really get back to. Like, for the people who are watching, I'm going to just challenge y'all to do this shit. Find you some freaking shit. Find out what your person really likes or what they haven't seen or what they want to see and go on a bus up in the bedroom with it. Like, if your dude want to see you with nothing but a necktie and some furry cuffs around your ankles, bitch. Furry cuffs and a necktie. You know, if your woman wants to see you all up, if she wants a Ralph Tresman, yet you got a phase on love body, hey, or that Joan on up, slide on in there anyway. Right, right. Like, I think that, um, you know, we should really just have a little bit more sexual freedom, um, not only for ourselves, but then also for our partners, so that 2021, we could just be having some fun. Like, life is way too short, you guys, to not be having fun in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I agree yeah. with that. that. That definitely should happen. You you definitely need to 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 like sex is supposed to be fun. It ain't supposed to be like a chore. So it's definitely supposed to be fun. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I get you know you get goofy with it. Sometimes I got a championship belt with my face on it, and sometimes no I walk in the room like I'm the Rock. Yeah, no I walk in the room like I'm the Rock. <laughs> and motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Just like, do you know what that pussy is about to get? For those of you who've never seen Ting perform, okay, the dude will come to the show with the belt, bitch. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> he will have the, the belt on his shoulder <laughs> at the show. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my gosh. So, Mike B. You recently had me on your show. Thank you so much for the open mic podcast, which was absolutely phenomenal. And so you got an opportunity to ask me a lot of things that most people don't. So I'm so glad to have you in the hot seat this time. Um, (laughs) We're going to dive into what's what's most important. Um, What do you think is most important to you about sex? Uh, Chemistry. Chemistry is one. Chemistry. Um, not only chemistry, but you got to be able to like that person too. Uh, I, I learned, I learned that the older I got, the older I get, that if you don't really like that person, um, everything else ain't going to work down there. Like, period. Right. So you know, you could be like, oh, she fine as hell. Then y'all get in the bed, and then it's like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> and then I realized I don't like that person. Like, <laughs> like that. Like you look aesthetically, you're great. Just my man down here don't think. We we rocking out, so um, liking that person, and just being and, and just being open to um, mm-hmm. to different stuff. You know, I remember one time I bought a, I went on Amazon and um and I bought like this whole um, uh, BD, BDSM kit, BDSM kit, whatever. Yes, right? yes. And yes. Um, we didn't use all the items, but it came with like a, uh, with you know the leash and handcuffs and fairy cuffs and the ankle. Well, dip. Shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, oh, the, the, little, the little tassel whip thing or whatever. We didn't use all of it, but I just bought it, you know, and mm-hmm. it was open to it and boom, you know, and I think um, a lot of times uh, during sex, I, there's a lot of, oh, I'm not going to do this. I ain't going to do that, which turns turns everybody off. Mm-hmm. But you say, hey, I'm down. You know, I'll try, I'll try anything once. Mm-hmm. Once. <laughs> and you got to make that one time count, so. Yeah, it is very, very important to have fun and to have communication and really all those other things that you mentioned. Um, what's most important about sex has always been one of my most favorite questions because everybody's perspective is totally different. Some people are solely focused on the nuts. Some people want the connection. You say you got to like the person. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. You the first man to come on here and say, if you don't like them, my joke not going to work. Yeah. First, look, you one in a million as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> because most men give uh, you know, that nigga don't like it and just say, I'm gonna go hit it, I'm gonna go bait it up. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the older man. you get, that vibe gotta get right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had some I had some pretty pretty I, I had some pretty women. And I mean, like I said, beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Probably like the whole time be like, yo, I'm I'm I've been trying to smash and get that opportunity. And mm-hmm. that thing was like, yo. Hey, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just not showing up for the Super Bowl. I'm just not. I got injured out. <laughs> I'm That's James Harden in the playoffs. I'm, I'm I'm good. <laughs> so it's important. I don't care. I'm married. Yeah, it, my shit don't work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so see, I, I I'm gonna go ahead and assume you you the youngest person in the room right now. Um, I know that we yeah. have, that I've asked you that. Uh, yeah. 
I think I'm old. So I know that I've asked you that before, but it's been a while. Um, but does your outlook change on sex as you get older also? I know you and Nikki be doing a lot of crazy shit over there. And we be, every once in a while, we, yeah, we, you know what I'm saying? I got to let her know that I'm still that nigga when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, as far as, like, like, it has to be fun. Like, we can even be goofy with shit. Like, I like to say jokes when I'm in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucking nigga, who's the Burger King King bitch? And motherfucker, she be like, you are. <laughs> and then we laugh about it. Like, I like having fun about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we 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 gotta have fun with it. Like if it ain't fun, then it's just it's just mundane. Like it, it has to be a good time, man. She has to be open to everything. Hey, let me eat your ass today. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it has to be cool. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's the shit that I like. You know what I'm saying? It just has to be fun, a good time. Right. So that actually brings me to another really important question, um, because you both are comedians um, and I know that humor is, is paramount, you know what I mean, in your life. How much of, of do you really feel that humor belongs in the bedroom? Um, I'm, I'm asking you, Mike B, do, do you bring humor into the bedroom? Uh, I mean, uh, pre -game, yeah. it's for it to be. Oh, yeah. Uh, pregame. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cracking jokes pregame, you know. It, it, I'm cracking jokes and uh, you know, like like today. I, I I don't care. Today I was doing the busted challenge in front of my wife. I don't care. I did it. <laughs> I was dropping it down. Did the arm and and like yo, is, is is my ass shaking? Is is it perfect enough for you? What you think? It's like it ain't moving. I'm like all right, cool. You know, all pregame, all up for the night. You know, <laughs> just yeah. you know. So uh, I think it's a lot easier when you have a sense of humor. I mean, I I, I haven't been a. Uh, I, I've never been a thug, so uh, all I have is this, you know. So I think the fact that I am a comedian um, makes it <laughs> <things better. laughs> you know, it kind of breaks mm -hmm. open the, the, the that that wall. You right, know? right. So, That's funny. You said I only have this. Like, <laughs> this, I got um, this dad bod. <laughs> I got this nice ass jacket on now. You know, <laughs> this is all I got. like this it. <laughs> <laughs> I come with no shape up. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's it. There's nothing wrong with that though. Like sexual acceptance uh, is really, really important. Um, but one thing that I wanted to tackle because I've been having these conversations with some women lately just about body, not necessarily shaming, mm -hmm. um, but maybe some of the aesthetic things that we do go through um, either to be pleasing to ourselves or to be pleasing to a man. So you guys have your women, you love your women, super sexy, you know what I mean? Want them all the time. Right. Both say when you're in the street, you may see something that looks totally opposite of your woman. And that's, you know what I mean? That might be in the street and with your boys, oh, she's thick as if she's fat like that. Or when you go to your porn reel, everybody in the porn looks like every woman in the street. Mm -hmm. Is there any um, legitimacy to Maybe some of the insecurities that women may feel when what you view might not necessarily be what you have. I, for me, yeah, uh, Mary Man, Mary Man Mike. If I see <laughs> we gonna change your name, I just want you to know twenty twenty one is gonna be uh, Mary Man Mike for the rest. Of the Mary Man Mike, you know, if I see something <laughs> porno that I like, I normally, uh, I normally buy it for my wife. Like outfit wise, so I, I mean more so body type. So I'm a guy mm -hmm. for the moment, and in the street, I see a certain body type. That's what I'm always looking at. That's what I'm always watching. Mm -hmm. When I'm getting my 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 sexual fulfillment, I'm always looking for a certain thing. That's what I'm always looking at. That's what I'm always watching. That's what I what I always want. But at home, I have something that ain't that. I have something totally different. Yet. Mm -hmm. I still make sure, you know what I mean, to find that sexy. Those things can kind of play a little bit on the insecurities of a woman, but I'm asking, is there some legitimacy to those insecurities or should women kind of just chill when it comes to that? Uh, I think they should chill. Can I ask For that? Yes, yeah, yeah, by all means, man. Yo, so, like, yeah, 
I mean, I can understand them being or women being, uh, you know, what I'm saying kind of like that messes with their psyche, right? A little bit, right? right. right. But right. at the same time, it's like, nigga, like when it comes to when it comes to porn, nigga, I watch just about motherfucking anything, nigga. I be watching. I be watching fat bitches and shit, and, and you know what I'm saying? My girl ain't big like that, you know what I'm saying? She ain't no 600 pound life. But sometimes I watch her, I was like, ah, I just want to see, you know what I'm saying? Or sometimes, like, like ever since Trump got elected, I've been watching a lot of cuckold porn, right? Been watching a lot of cuckold porn. Now, wow. if you don't know what cuckold porn is, cork, That's cuckold nasty. porn is when they is when they fucking. Uh, uh, a white wife pays a black man to fuck her in front of her husband while yelling disrespectful shit. To her husband, and I'm like, nigga, I find that shit fascinating. But I don't want nobody to fuck my girl in front of me. I don't want that shit. Sometimes I just watch it for the story. Have you ever seen the Popeyes porn? It's fucking amazing. <laughs> you know I'm really eclectic with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like women should kind of chill a little bit, and and I ended up in this discussion because my female friend said. She felt like she had to change herself to be pleasing to her guy. Like, I'm going to go get this done. I'm going to go get that done. And, you know, niggas going to be nah, on me. And I'm that. like, niggas don't not on that. you now. He already, he already you know loves like, you. He already yeah. loves right. you. Like, the reality of it is, fuck all that. If you're not cool, if you're not smart, if you're not, like, if you're not what somebody wants on the inside, like, you could do something on the outside, but at the end of the day, it's not going to last. It's not going to matter. Yeah. And, and, to, and to that, too, even if you, like, say, right. for example, you're looking at, like, like cuckold porn or big BBW porn or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she catches you and she gets that insecurity. It, um, once she needs to chill. Okay, let's just start there. She needs yeah. to chill, right? right? But at the same time, it's your job as a man to reassure her. You know what I'm saying? Is that is your job to always right. fill her up with compliments and be over the top, like you know, psych her up, but like, no, nah, you know, baby, you you the baddest, you the bitch. You know what I'm saying? You know, you all all, all that shit that y'all want to hear, right? <laughs> you got to hype her up, you get well, just to erase that insecurity, you know? Because I mean, that's that, I mean, if you flip the question on the other end, right? If you say the same question that you asked, uh, I'm not six four, two hundred pounds of muscle with like twelve, 12 not at 12, all. And I'm, also, and I'm also not about to get any kind of surgery to be to be six four and to get those abs. Period. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is all you get. This is me. This is it. Yes, <laughs> this is it. So I would, I, you know, I'm 180 so, pounds of pure rage and passion. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's gonna happen through these doors. That's it. <laughs> so I mean, you could watch a bit muscular man, but I'm not gonna don't don't. I'm not gonna sit there and be in my head like now. All of a sudden, I gotta grow to be six four because at the end of the day, we're, we're in this together, and she fills me up just like I fill her up with a lot of compliments, hyping her up, and you know all them other adjectives that you describe to you know to re for reassurance. And if all else fails, and you know like. Uh, Another thing is like, what if your girl's in the gangbangs? And then motherfucker, and she likes watching gangbangs, and now you like, oh, nigga, you, you want to get fucked by seven niggas? You know what I'm saying? No, no. Of nigga. course she does. She's like looking at it. <laughs> of course she does. If she's watching it, that's what she's into, really. No, really. no, that's no. How, no. That's how I like seeing big girls get fucked <laughs> don't mean I want to fuck a big girl. Don't get that twisted. It's not the same thing. It's just like, don't hey, this is interesting. But it, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna front tank. Big girls do have 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 better vagina. Big girls have <laughs> better vagina. Just saying for a guy who's at the, at the I ain't buffet, gonna say that, nigga. I just, I just, I'm just saying that shit is made for a pound. So let me ask you all this because this is like something that we've kind of tossed around on my shows before. Um, not big girls, but the big fake asses. Like people say these big asses can't take dick. The fake ones. Mm -hmm. Who has I never had a fake ass. Had. You haven't had a fake one yet? I never had. Nah, no, nah, I haven't even had a uh a, a fake ass shot grazed. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Prophet Pete in the background. I never had a grazed. I've never had nothing. Prophet Pete said facts. 
So I guess he's agreeing with that shit. Like I haven't had a big fake girl's ass either. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's very uh interesting that that's the notion. Um I know in certain arenas, like that's what's important to have on your arm. You know what I mean? You gotta have the big titties, gotta have the big ass. But if you really can't take the dick for real, like I feel like it was a waste of surgery. It looks visually appealing. I ain't gonna front. Like like a, a big ass period looks visually appealing. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not necessary. Like, I'm not gonna wife you just because you got a big ass, nigga. Like, right. I gotta be able to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, like, if you was a former stripper, nigga, do you do you know politics, bitch? Like, what <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just, I just feel like, yeah, why? I just feel like, I just feel like, fake booties are just too much work, yo. Fake, fake butts are too much work because, like, what if you hit it too hard and then, like, it popped? Like, when the cheeks pop, now you got a deflated cheek. Now, now what you want to do? Now you got to call the ER, you know, sex game done. So, nah, I don't. Do then that there's all. that. <laughs> and then there's the warranty, that. If the warranty runs out, now you got, now oh. I got to, I got to go and pay extra money because the warranty ran out on your ass. Now I got to buy a whole new, this, this, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm good. Funny, true my story. Thing, my, my biggest thing about that shit is like everybody, it's like it's something for everybody. Some niggas like fake asses, and and you know what I'm saying? They gonna like it, nigga. That's not really my thing because I know what kind of woman gets that. You know what I'm saying? So that's not really my type of woman. But nigga, I'm not mad at you, might be if that's what you like. You feel me? It's hey, that's for you. <laughs> no, but yeah, right. right. I'm going to tell you all a funny, true story, though. So um, I was at the gym, and there's a, another young lady there who's a regular. The young lady who's a regular, she, it's, it's a well-known fact that her ass is fake. It's not no secret. You know, it is what it is. But you could always tell when she just got fucked because the shape of her ass would be different. <laughs> like, like, I don't know where you went, sis, to get your surgery. Or your injections, yeah, just that. they didn't hold up well. So like she would come in, and certain times that don't be perfect. That don't be nice. She coming at John another day, and it would have like both cheeks equally smushed into like a weird kind of shape, and she would try to hide it, but you can't hide it because you just put all that like you put all that ass back there. You can't hide the fact that your shit's fucked up. She'd have to go to the doctor to get it adjusted. Yo, she got. She got that. She got. She got that stop motion ass. <laughs> her ass made. Her ass made out of the same shit they made. Root, uh, 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 Rudolph the reindeer, uh, red nosed reindeer, fucking it. back in the fucking eighties, nigga. That shit, nah. <laughs> they got them claymation, nigga. Is that you talking about? <laughs> that claymation, yo. That claymation ain't it, shit, yo. <laughs> That's like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm glad she don't watch it because she would know what I'm talking about her. She would know. That bitch is probably one surgery away from just not, not having no ass at all. I swear to God. I don't think I would ever want to do something that surgery-wise on my body that would affect my sex life in a negative way. Like, I low key kind of want my boobs lifted, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like if it's going to deflect the attention away from my nipples or if I'm going to lose sensation, I don't want to do it. I kind of could use a little bit more ass. Lord didn't bless me like that for real. But, but then is, I'm like, the hey, is, this is going to change the way this do, thing works. You got to do, you do what makes you happy. You right. got to do what makes you happy, baby. Yeah. I mean, your shape is your shape. You know, you know, if you get that extra, ass, now you're gonna look. Now you're gonna look proportioned. You're gonna look weird, and it's just not gonna look right. Cause there's no true, there's no true measurement that you can Google that says what's the right amount of ass for this particular height and weight. Like you can't Google that. So it's right, either, there's no right. ratio. Yeah, <laughs> there's no ratio. You so know, you know, you could, you know, you know what the crazy thing is? There's nothing for niggas. We can't do nothing. We can't get implant muscles. 
We can't motherfucker. Yeah. All yes, we, can. we can do is yes, go to the gym. Yes, can. We can't get no you extra. Can. We can't get no extra they got, dick. They got all that. They got all of that Niggas is out here getting fake dicks, all, Tink. What are you talking about? Replacing it. But all, but all we can really do is get money. Money is check <laughs> money. <laughs> that's it. That's and that's it. it. We get the money. Fuck that's the surgery, it. right? Money makes you a, make money makes the pussy way. In the room <laughs> and have plenty of pussy. Plenty in the blue pill. That's a fact. Look at little boosie. So <laughs> <laughs> then, then really, how much money do you think it takes to get to be in that to be in that position? And I'm gonna use a person as an example. A Lord billion. forgive me using this person as an example. Um, let's say Jack Thriller. Okay. Jack Thriller, Fetty Wap, any nigga that got one eye fucked up. We just gonna put them all. <laughs> in the Slick Rick. Slick Rick. All up. Mm. What do you think it really takes? Money wise, for them to have some of the baddest bitches walking around, like is there is twenty there, million like, dollars? Twenty million. I, I don't know. I, I, the reason I can't answer that question because I feel like a, a lot of a lot of women would mess with them just based off of their handicap and their personality. So the handicap is an advantage. Yeah, it's like look at this one eyed nigga. I love him. No bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me holler at you, girl. Come here. Come here, girl. Yeah. Let me look. <laughs> like you don't see the way. <laughs> yeah, it's real. It really don't take that, that much. It really don't take that much money. <laughs> it really don't take that much money because if you remember, Flavor Flav had a show, and motherfucking so, bitches lined up, including Delicious, to fucking marry Flavor Flav. So it really don't yeah. take that much. And he was old too. This, this is old Flavor Flav. This wasn't yeah. young Flavor Flav. This was like old Flavor Flav. You gotta, you gotta remember. Or do women want to fuck for status or for money? Because they're both equally important. So it's like, do you mm -hmm. want to fuck for status, the name, the flame, or do you want to fuck for money, Jeff Bezos? What do you want to do? So being in the entertainment industry, and both of you are growing, you know, think you're you 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 be on national platforms. So you know what I mean? The your prospects or or your potential is out of this world. What do you think as you go through in this game? Like, it's going to be your biggest challenge as far as the women are concerned. Like, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge? No, I'm staying away from these bitches. I because I, I know <laughs> like the more I, the more I know, motherfucking the 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 more shark type women are going to come after me, and uh, like I don't. Ain't nobody gonna be for me other than my girl who I know is for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I know she's for me. Because she she's been with me even before I did comedy and rooted me on while I was doing comedy. So it's like all the other chicks, it's like they only fuck with me because like I'm funny in the moment or I'm charming in the moment. And I'm just like, nah, I'm cool. I I ain't I ain't with none of that. I just wanna be with my girl, you feel me? Cause she supports me. How do you feel like a man really determines if a woman is for him versus for what he has? What do you think, Mike? Um, just where you, where you, where you was at when I met you, where where I was at when you when I when you met me, basically. Um, like my wife, she met me, and I moved from Norfolk to up here. I had uh, I was working for the National Guard, which basically was just one week in a month. I had no money. Uh, no job, I was just up here, you know. <laughs> and I moved in with her mom, and you know now we have our own place and stuff, and our own, ho our own house and stuff like that. So those are things you just you like. No matter what, no what any new woman shows up to, they can't replace that. You know what she what she what she already put in. Like that's that's like a four hundred one k plan. Like she put in a lot of money, a lot of time. <laughs> it's, it's an investment. I'm yeah, investing yeah. in you. You know, and, too, and you yeah. also got you also got to you also got to find a woman that's like, I ain't saying she got to meet you when you're at this stage, mm -hmm. but you have to go through something and see if, how how much she's there for you. So it has to be uh, money money wise, spiritually or emotionally. And if you're down and out in one of those three areas, and she's helping you get through that shit, yeah. then motherfucking that's the one that's for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the one that's for you. If you're 
if you've been in, 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 like, if somebody just want to fuck with you while you all the way up you know what i'm saying like that might mean that not, might not be the one for you and kanye is figuring this out right now hey Every kanye's time. worth three billion i would have waited to divorce his ass right about now too <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that's crazy um so we're gonna jump into a sex fact you guys since it is tasty titty tuesday we're gonna talk about something that's a little bit crazy, but are you aware that on oh, that there's six percent of people who got extra nipples? Did you know that? In the I world, six percent got that. extra nipples. So, how many? Where nipples are the nipples? Though? Are they on the shoulders? Listen, they didn't. They didn't give location. I asked about the breast, so I'm going to assume the nipples are in this area now. How many nipples is too many when you walk into the bedroom? Like, well, like, what are you gonna be like? You know what? Nah. It, it, it depends what a nipple is. Yeah, I mean, it depends what a nipple is because if it's like on your back somewhere, I'm like, is that cancer? You got cancer? Let me talk about that. Is that cancer? Yeah. If you if I'm eating your if I'm eating your ass, you got a nipple right above your asshole. I'm like, yo, yeah. let's, let's, <laughs> yo, what's that? Is that product placement? Because <laughs> I'm an automatic because I got toxic masculinity in my blood, right? So I'm going to automatically have toxic masculinity. I'm like, are you trans? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this nipple here? <laughs> Gotta let me know. Dude. Well, would that be something that'll make you say, you know what? I'm, you, you wouldn't deal with the person. Like if a chick had an extra nipple, would you still be cool with it? Let's say it's in a place that it belongs. Let's say I I, I, I got two on one side, two on the other. You still going to rock with me? With the double that's nipples. Full nipples. That's full nipples. That's full nipples. That's that's a that's a that's an excellent point. It, 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 so it's like it's I okay. So full so, nipples. So so T. So so what yeah. you're saying is so it's so it's two nipples, right? And then underneath the nipple, where, okay, this the where, where the nipple's supposed to be at, right? On the areolas, right? Yeah. Areola yeah. nipples, right? right? And then yeah. underneath the uh, underneath those two nipples, there is an extra set of nipples. Yes, there's extra. Yes. Oh, that, that's that's well, it's game time. It's game. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Cause like, like, cause you you can't ever say nothing bad about me. Like, <laughs> like, if you say something like, "Oh yeah, you bitch ass nigga," that's why you ate my ass. I'm like, you full titty having ass bitch. Like, you, like, you can't say nothing bad about me ever in your um, life. You like got four, you got four nipples and two of them are hot. I, I would have a problem if it was two nipples right on the areola. And then, like, there was one nipple underneath that nipple, and then the other nipple on the other on the other titty was on top. So, so was, listen, we have already understood that you are about <laughs> symmetry. Dance yeah, yeah. That, that wait, was wait, 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 hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Tim. Wait a minute, Tim. What about what about niggas? What if a nigga yeah, had a nipple man. underneath his beard? What if a nigga had a nipple underneath his beard though? So, thought, it, thought it was a razor bump. <laughs> Right, you thought it was a race bump. Yeah. That nigga was like, I'm so weird that I might lick that motherfucker just to see if I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try one time to see if I <laughs> see if it be all right. <laughs> but I don't really like no whole lot of hair around the nipple, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence, but like, what if that nigga, what if that nigga had a nipple? nipple? What if that nigga had a nipple? What, what if that nigga had a nipple at his waistline? And while you give no. him head, he was like, "Give him some too." <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right below the, right below the belly button. <laughs> I, 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 somebody bring a referee here, okay? Flag on the play. I'm getting up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, oh, 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 oh. Right on the right, nipple, right on the belt line. It's like belly button, nipple. <laughs> like yeah. if you about to go down on the nigga and you brush against the nipple on the way, that's a fucking false start. Like it's not happening. Like right. can't right. do. Can't do it, but like I feel like it's something that you wouldn't don't surprise me with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell me. Don't don't surprise me with extra nipples. Like I that's not the kind of surprise I want in the bedroom. Oh, tell oh. me at a time. Let me let it sizzle in my spirit. Let me decide if I really, you know, want to go for it. And what brought me to that, you guys. Of course, so uh, of course a nigga gonna surprise you though. A nigga has to surprise yeah. you. He ain't gonna tell you. He ain't gonna tell I, you that shit over a candlelight dinner. <laughs> I'm gonna need to cut that light off real quick. I don't. <laughs> Why? Right, just cut the light off. Don't worry about it. Just cut the light off. Just, we'll talk about it later. Just the light off. Way, right? In the yeah, just cut the light off. I'm gonna be in these sheets. You be rubbing. You be rubbing that nigga's stomach. You be like, that's my spot. 
<laughs> like, lick, lick your finger, put it right there again. Lick your finger, put it right there. Right there. <laughs> that would be terrible, yo. And they could just be busting, having straight nipple gasms. No, don't. Yeah, you know what? You know why I asked? I it, place with you guys. I could it's, it's always up to men to fucking. It's always up to men to fucking be able to fucking put up with shit. You know what I'm saying? It's never up to a woman to put up with shit. It's always so, up to a man. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and beg the differ on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and beg the differ. Like I feel like. Especially in that space, women put up with a lot of different things. Men come to the bedroom with a lot of shit. I'm telling y'all, it comes to the bedroom with a whole lot of shit. So we Bro, do. We have might to have be fat. fat. We might be hairy. Oh, that be about God. it. No. It's weird oh, shit, no. nigga. It's weird shit. What if a nigga just won't put his finger up your nose? Like, nigga, you in the boogers? Like, <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 are you, who are you talking? I've never heard of a man be like, yo, let me finger your nose. I've when never, you- I've never, I've never, <laughs> seen, I've never seen that genre of porn. I've never seen that genre of porn. <laughs> let me go for that nostril real quick. Let me see what that nostril hitting on. <laughs> Get up in that thing. <laughs> like, bro, you never know. Like, like, but women, y'all, y'all, be, y'all be lying the most, though. Y'all be lying the most. Y'all be having what, what waist trainers or girdles on and motherfucking, like, and then when you get to the bedroom, be like, unleash. And be like, what? Go for the ass. Wait, wait, <laughs> Should just your, fill out your belly girl. button is at your knees, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Listen. <laughs> Yo. I, think I feel some kind of way, nigga. You see, I put on all this weight. This motherfucker pants, nigga. I'm just saying, <laughs> nigga, so I'm saying. Nigga, if, we, if, least, if we fat, guess what? You know we fat. Listen, yeah, I don't hide it though. It's like here it is, but you like me or you don't. I, yeah, I, 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 I just lying in the bedroom. Yeah, I, I don't like. I don't like. I don't like when when you come you you go you go to bed with a certain look. And then the next morning, you don't have that look. Like if you had hair on your head when we went to sleep, I need that same hair, not on the desk or on the, on the table. I need that hair on your head. Right. Well, just give me a warning. Right. I, I mean, all I this. Know, I ain't I, even know late for us just popular. Like oh my God. <laughs> Dude, you ever seen a woman snatch off their hair, their wig like that, and just throw it off? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've been that woman, you guys. They, I've they, been they snatch their they wig off and, and they twirl in their hair. And waving like a helicopter, doing this for no Carolina, no Carolina. Come on, I'm the coming off in the bed, but I feel like, look, if it come off during the process, I shouldn't have to put it back on anymore. But, 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 but that's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm talking about like I didn't fell asleep before you, and you like you a whole nother person. Who this? <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why yeah, so. niggas are respectful. Niggas are respectful because guess what? If we bald. And we got a hat on. Guess what? We fucking with the hat on. And you waking up with us with the hat on. I don't know about that. That's a fact. That's I, don't a fact. That I don't know about that one, man. I'm very, I'm very sensitive about my hat, so I'm not sleeping in my hat. <laughs> I'm very sensitive about my hat, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive about my hat. I can't sleep in the hat. Can't do it. So I am. Uh, I grew up in the, the different world era. And so I don't know if you all remember the particular episode of A Different World where it was kind of toward the end. And Whitley and Dwayne kind of wasn't doing it as much. Things had kind of changed, you know what I'm saying? So Whitley got up before Dwayne woke up. She went brush her teeth. She went fix the hair. She went did all this shit to be pretty for him when he woke up in the morning. Like I low key do that shit. You guys don't tell no fucking body. That's don't tell. I ain't mad at that. Like, I, ain't mad I feel at like that. I feel like that move set a set really in in my mind, which is probably crazy, but I think it kind of set a standard. Like. I do want to, I do want you to wake up to what you went to bed with. Like I that that's exactly what I want you to see. So why you, might why not you think niggas, full face why you think makeup, niggas sleep with do-rags? But I still need my lashes to be in place. I still need to be, you know, get a little crust out my eyes before you see me. You know what I'm saying? Like I I, I do a little sleep that's too, like that. that's too much. I don't feel like it's too much. I feel like you that's gotta too do much. It. That's part of it, going together. Part of it is for myself, just to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Like when you wake up in the morning, like I want you to want to fuck again. But I might not want to blow my hot morning breath in your face while we fuck. Right. So, give me that hot breath. <laughs> at least let me give you this minty breath 
while I'm stealing your dick in the morning. Like the very least I could do. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a hot corona. Uh, <laughs> That's a girl thing, though. Like, hot, hot nah, I need that hot breath. Give it to me. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to me. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to me. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to yeah, I mean, what if I mean, what if what if you end up he end up being the one, right? He's going to get that hot breath eventually, because niggas don't wait. They're gonna wake up in the morning and be like, "Oh shoot, that ass looking nice," and then boom, wake you waking up to some to, to some morning sex, to some morning dick, right? You had time. You know what? You know what? That's that's you know that's, 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 that's side. Don't don't the side you ain't really. I ain't really got to smell your breath in that position, like. You know, you know what the sexiest thing to us is? <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> to the, sexy, the sexiest thing to men is confidence. So even if you have yeah. hot breath and you acting like you the fucking baddest bitch at a Beyonce concert, nigga, we, we still like that shit, nigga. Like, just act like, nigga, act like you that motherfucker. Because that's all niggas do all day. We act like we that nigga. Yeah. So motherfucker, act like you that bitch. And motherfucker, act like you the baddest bitch ever with a bad breath in yep. the fucking morning, and we gonna love you. We gonna love you. Yeah. And we gonna be like, nigga, I can't miss out on her because she's the baddest bitch with hot breath ever. <laughs> I, mean, I, I say this all the time. Everybody love Beyonce with the makeup on, but they don't see they don't see they don't see at home making spaghetti Beyonce. That's why I bet you. I bet you at home making spaghetti Beyonce is confident as a bitch. I bet so you. Nice. I like that. And I bet you look at Jay Z like I know you cheated on me, but nigga, I'm still that bitch, and I'll go fuck, I'll go fuck Michael B. Jordan right now, nigga. I was in conversation with the comedian earlier, and that was part of the conversation. They had asked about I can't think of old dude name, but how he came for that girl about her saying that she was a ten. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, his too. comparison was, you know, well, why do you think you're a ten? What about Beyonce? What about Rihanna? And that was the point that I made was nobody has seen Beyonce or Rihanna without the makeup, without the hair on, without the whatever. But, but, so you're but, a, but guess what? No, though, what, I what, guarantee what, you, they still feel, feel like they that bitch though. Yeah, like, they still feel you like they they that they that woman that motherfucking like nigga. You ain't gotta like me with no makeup, jigger. But well, motherfucker, guess what? I bet you motherfucking Nas will fuck me. I bet you motherfucking Lil Wayne will fuck me with no fucking makeup. Like, you you got to carry yourself. Because that's what niggas do all day. We lie to ourselves all day. Mike me, we lie to ourselves all day. We all say, time. we say, we say, nigga, we, we still got it. We still got it. We, we that nigga. We that nigga. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put this on. I feel like this nigga. I feel like... A uh, nigga, nigga, motherfucker, you do the same shit, yo. Let's right. lie to each other. Because guess what? We lie to the world when we're not around each other as if we're fucking productful, happy people, even though we might not be. So motherfucking, motherfucking lie to your spouse, nigga. Make her feel the way, motherfucker, you make white people feel at work. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that goes back on to, to people. Mm -hmm. people. Over words, hey? Yeah. Yeah, nigga, you, you gotta make a you gotta make her feel good, nigga. Like nigga, if I can lie to white people at work all day and say motherfucker, yeah, I like you, motherfucker, or oh, I have this report done and then I come home and I'm real to her. Like, man, get the fuck out my face. No, nigga, I love you, baby. Oh, you killing that. Nigga, motherfucker, even if I don't think she's killing that, nigga, you killing that, nigga. And I want her to do the same to me. Nigga, because I know she has to be a different person out here in white America. So, mm -hmm. motherfucker, when you come in the house with me, motherfucker, pump me up like you pump them crackers up. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, man. That's how I feel. Let's lie to each other and, and, and make each other feel like we the shit, nigga. That's how I feel. I'm sorry. Ain't no. nothing wrong with that, though, team. You ain't saying nothing wrong. No need to apologize. Like, we're gonna cut that shit, repost that a hundred thousand times this week. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah. like, I almost feel like, oh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Like, for real, I'm real tough, man. Like, nigga, you gotta make a motherfucker, even if it ain't true. Like, like I might not be the shit to you, Tiff. I might not be the shit to you, but don't make me think that I ain't the shit. You right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't change my mind about me. Right, and I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna change her mind about her, nigga. I love you, baby. Ooh, look at how you doing it, nigga. Yeah. Motherfucker, I ain't gonna change her mind about her. Shit, that's how the fuck she feel. 
You know what I'm saying, nigga? Motherfucking confidence is key. Even if it's false confidence, that shit is key. How many, hey, oh, Mike B, how many terrible comedians you see do extraordinary things just because they think they're in a place that we don't think they're at, but motherfucking, they think they're at that fucking place. Nigga, motherfucking, it's a lot of them niggas, bro. So motherfucking, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I ain't gonna you say no talk about me like that to my face. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, motherfucking, it ain't not talking about you, you, know what saying? you got you got to feel like you the shit. If you with somebody that don't make you feel like you the shit, yeah, man, like the fuck them, you know. Leave they ass, yeah. leave they ass. Listen, you will want to talk about something else because we got another ten minutes. But how do I follow Tink? You don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe. I'm Why do you follow that? You don't. I'm I not, can't. Not say <laughs> I don't. I didn't plan on saying nothing else for the next ten minutes. I was just gonna talk <laughs> football around. He was just gonna be here. He yeah. like so you like, talk football around for ten minutes. Show early. <laughs> I'm like, yo, hey T, go ahead and go ahead and crop me out of the picture. Go ahead and <laughs> um, Tink Tink clips. I'm good. I'm. I'm. Hey, thank you for the credit. I'm no, good. Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a moment. I've been drinking Crown Royal. Yeah, I had a moment. Yeah, I'm I'm not, I mean, it's, it's nothing that you said that was wrong, man. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying earlier. Powerful confidence is mighty, mighty powerful, and it is so important. Not like you said, not only in your work life or how you experience life, but it's important in your relationship life and and what you bring to the bedroom. Because if you're if you're not confident in there, it's definitely going to show. Yeah. Right, right, right. How many times have you seen? How many times you can scroll through Instagram and you see a big girl, maybe even Lizzo or something, and motherfucker, she walked through like she walked through the video like motherfucker, I'm that shit. But nigga, right. you can't help but you can't help but watch. Now you like right. nigga, I ain't about to, I ain't about to scroll up. I'm gonna watch this shit all the way through because she feeling herself. And, you know and, what I'm saying? Be, and truth like, be told, be told that's that's where the that's where the ninety nine point nine percent of Lizzo hate comes from. It's because yeah. she's right. so fucking right. confident. Right. You, she's a, you, she's you, a gotta, you gotta feel yourself, yo. If yeah. you think you're the bad, if you think you're the baddest chick ever, motherfucking do do whatever the fuck you think it is, nigga. Hey, if you think you you the illest nigga ever or one of the illest niggas ever, nigga, do your thing, nigga. Wear shit that you wanna fucking wear. Don't fucking, nigga. I don't give a fuck if a nigga hate on it, nigga, because a nigga wanna talk anyway. Right. If it's good or bad. So motherfucker, you might as well be be the ultimate you. That's all I'm saying, nigga. Be who the fuck you spoke you wanna be, nigga. So if you think you fucking acting like Rick Ross, nigga, just say oof why you wearing a fucking fur coat, nigga. Like nigga, do your thing, nigga. Like I swear to God, nigga. I'm on that shit now. That's what I'm on, bro. That's hey, what I'm on. That's a good place to be though, Tink. Like I'm can't take nothing away from that. That is a good place to be and just in and living in that mindset. Like I already you can already feel how much is going to come to you by your level of confidence and by what you're putting out. So yeah, I appreciate it. Like sometimes I don't feel confident, but nigga, you, you gotta look yourself in the mirror and be like, hey man, you only get to live once. Do the shit that you think is dope, man. Like you gotta do the shit that you think is dope and motherfucking and you wanna amp other people to do shit that they think is dope. That way they don't regret life later on. You know what I'm saying? That's, right. that's all I'm saying. Mike B on this motherfucker straight tossing the football around like we ain't shit. I, I told you. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why it's you took the same thing. <laughs> like, like, Tink just set this whole thing on fire and you like, hey, so Mike, what's your he, he, he did. He <laughs> did. This show is a fantastic. I'm sorry, Mike. Hey, man. Oh, hey, right hey, man. I've, been a, I've been a comic for a long time, man. I know when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said, who gonna follow this nigga? Like, ain't nobody give him the light or nothing. Just let him go. <laughs> Just let him go. So, oh, Mike B, um, before we go, like, tell everybody about your fantastic podcast, which I had the opportunity to be on you guys and the interview was fantastic. Thank you so much. That was best set of questions anybody has ever asked me. Um, but tell everybody about your open mic radio podcast. All right, so All My Radio Podcast is on iTunes and Spotify. It's basically, um, well, I actually have two shows. So it's All My Radio Podcast that comes on Apple and iTunes. It drops every Tuesday at midnight. And then I have the spinoff that airs live on Facebook and Zoom. And uh, that that episode releases on Apple and iTunes on All My Radio Podcast page on Fridays. 
And uh, basically, it's a comedy. It's basically a comedy podcast, but it's also um, interview questions as well. But basically, just like breaking the wall down outside the comedy shit and just talking about you and and having regular. Co- I never have a format. Like it, this is this is the whole podcast notebook. I I, pull out, I don't have a format. I just talk. And we just figure the shit out in an hour, and then I'm like, all right, that's enough. My wife, my wife, my, and notebook, my motherfucking notebook look crazy as shit. <laughs> Just random. <laughs> and it's the same notebook. I'll be having guests on. I'm like, this is what I'm going to ask them. And I never fill it out. I just like, whatever. We'll figure it out throughout the show. And I think that's what brings the. Uh, I think that's what brings people back because it's authentic. It's mm-hmm. um, it's it's fun, and um, it gives a, it gives people a chance to look at you as a human being, not as you know a podcaster or a comic or whatever. It gives you a chance to open up your real thoughts. Yeah. And then um, also, real quick, buy my damn album on uh, Promote My Be, which is on iTunes. And Spotify, uh, it's been out for a year. It debuted number one. Uh, it beat Gallagher, so it's really, really funny. And uh, Good job, man. yeah, and it's um, and, and my kids have basketball practice, and yeah. I need um, I need that money to um, yeah. shoes and uniforms and all of that. Okay. And a mask, gotta have a matching mask, <laughs> jersey. Yeah. So, yeah. so Tank, it's a very important time, like. Going on in the world tomorrow, we're about to have this inauguration. And if you guys have not seen Tink, he does uh, a black Donald Trump <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely hilarious. Are Are you going to be retiring the character once this? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much already retired the character, but like I might do one more. I might do one more tomorrow and motherfucking uh, and, and do it and just retire the character. But uh, if you if, like, for you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram, King Tink, K I N G T I N K. I'm also on Facebook at King Tink. And, uh, and I'm also trying to, uh, me and Dave Butler, another dope ass comic from fucking Baltimore, a monster. And uh, me and him, we're about to, we're putting a podcast together. And we're going to start, we're going to start doing the podcast. So make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to fucking just work, man. I'm just trying to work. I've been a little lazy in, in my brain a little bit during the pandemic, and um, but but right now I'm at the, I'm at a place where I'm just about to just release shit, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm about to just flood niggas' timelines and and, uh, and release shit that I think is funny, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, like, yeah, those those are the things that I'm working on. So I and I appreciate any support. Follow, I'll follow back. I don't give a fuck. So I appreciate everything. And thank you, Tiff, for having us on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is fun as fuck. We really appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah. No doubt. No thank doubt. You, you, know, look, you got one more time to call me Tiff and or Tiffany in public, nigga. This is T. Gray. Okay. I'm look, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just want to. Let me stop okay. flexing on you. So I'm just playing. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad, bad Miss Gray. <laughs> Nah, hey, 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 I called her Tasha one time. I almost got cussed out. Yeah. And she don't follow me. She don't my name was Tasha, and he was so serious. <laughs> like, how the fuck? No, no, no. I know her real name, but I didn't think that was a bad thing. That was my fault. No, I'm, 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 I'm just playing. It's, it's, it's for me. It's, it's a running joke for me for people that I'm like, no, don't <laughs> my name in public. Like, I, I'm not on stage, but I got a stage name, bitch. <laughs> right, right, right. My bad. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I did not mean to no, no. fuck that it, up. <laughs> you don't hear me out here like Aloysius. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aloysius. No, nah, but I I really appreciate both of you hopping on this show tonight. This has been so good, so enlightening. A lot of laughs. I appreciate you both. You all make sure you follow my guest, King Tink, one of the dopest to do it in Baltimore. Mike B, one of the best in Virginia. Like, the DMV is producing some really major talent. You guys don't miss out on it. Mike B has a new album out, two dope-ass podcasts. Tink about to come with some fire. I can't wait to see this new video if you do decide to do it for the inauguration. I think it'll be fantastic. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, 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 and another thing I'm going to say about, like, DMV comics, and that includes Baltimore, you know, they don't want to be here. A part of the DMV, but like, like motherfucking, like, there's a lot of talent here, and I yeah. know, I know, one day I'm gonna be on somebody's documentary talking about, yeah, I knew that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's a lot of talent here, and uh, I love everybody, you know what I'm saying? I love everybody. I wish nothing but success for for you, 
you T. Gray, <laughs> and you Mike B. I, I wish nothing but success for y'all in the next year. I love y'all. Thank you, fam. Same for you, though. Same for you. You know, you already know. I've told you umpteen times how funny I think you are and how much potential that is there in you. So I can't wait to see you be amazing. You know what I mean? Thank so thank you both for doing this show with me. You guys, I will see you all next Tuesday right here at WEMS Radio. Sex Talk with your girl T. Gray. Rodney Perry is going to be in the building next week. We're going to round out February with that fire. I don't know what me and Rodney going to talk about because look, we chop it up about sex. We get to talk about everything else happening in the world, but we want to bring you something fantastic. If you have questions you want to send in, go ahead and shoot them shits to my DM. And we're going to go ahead and get them on the show. Make sure you follow me at the T Gray or at the love below on the score of Sex Talk with T Gray. We'll be right back here next Tuesday, 9 to 10 p.m. WEMS Radio. Bye-bye.